We are going to talk about a bit about statistical mechanics and why do we use it. So let's first review some thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is an empirical science that means its results are derived from by doing a lot of experiments. And we know it has a four fundamental laws and the four laws are zeroth law. This talks about the temperature. The second law, it talks about entropy. The first law, it talks about that the heat is also a form of energy. So this kind of generalizes the uh, conservation of energy principle. And the third law, it tells that as temperature tends to zero, the entropy of a system also tends to zero. So all these four laws, we can use them and uh, predict what a thermodynamic system will do. Now, now the thermodynamics also has some limitations because let's consider a thermodynamic system. That's a container containing some ideal gas. Let the number of molecules be n. Now, according to thermodynamics, we can describe the system by some state variables and these are the pressure volume and temperature. Now these three variables are independent in nature and they follow an equation of state. So in this case this is the ideal gas equation and these three variables are related to each other and we can predict what the system will do according to these three variables. Now, thermodynamics does not describe the microscopic distribution of these uh, random particles, what each random particle will be doing. So, but in principle, we can use Newtonian dynamics or uh, Hamiltonian dynamics to predict what these individual particles are doing. So, for example, let's consider a one particle system. So, and that's a phase space. This is P and this is Q. These are generalized position and this is generalized momentum. And for example, the particle can be described by the generalized coordinate and its generalized momentum in the phase space formulation of mechanics. So that's a phase space. So let's assume that this is the initial position of the particle. Now we know the Hamiltonian equations. It tells that the Q dot is equals to dH dP and P dot is minus dH dQ. So given the Hamiltonian of the system, we can predict uh, what will be the future trajectory of this particle at any instant t. So this is q of t and p of t. So in principle, if we are given the initial condition where the, uh, the, where the particle is, then we can predict that what will be its future trajectory. Now we can use this formulation in statistical mechanics because the statistical mechanics consist a lot of particles. So we will be dealing with the particle which is the order of 10 to the 23. So these are a lot of particles and but there are certain limitations. Now according to Hamiltonian mechanics this uh, 
each particle will be obeying the equation the pi and pi dot is minus dh dqi where the Hamiltonian here is a function of q p where q refers to uh, if there are n particles then there will be q1 q2 q uh, 3n and p is defined as p1 p2 and p3n so this is the Hamiltonian of the system or we can say it's the energy if the Hamiltonian is independent of time so given the Hamiltonian of the system we can use these are uh, 6n equations I think because i goes from 1 to 3n and this i goes from 1 to 300 so there's a total of 6n equations so for n equals 10 to the 23 that's a lot of equation to solve and that's clearly impossible even for our modern computers so what we will do now So, if we take n equals uh, n nearly to the order of 23 in the phase space, which is 6, uh, I think it's 6 n dimensional phase space. So this phase space is six n dimension, and I'll, this this will be just a pictorial representation of it. So this will be p, and this will be q. So each point describes the ten to the twenty three particles at a given time, because this will be uh, the coordinate of this will be q one, q two, q three, q four, up to q three n, gamma, p one, p two up to P3n. So these are 6n coordinates for n particles. And so each coordinate will describe the state of, for example, an ideal gas. So actually we cannot describe the initial state of an ideal gas because, uh, not because the experimental limitation, but because even if we knew about the initial condition our computers will not be able to solve such systems so what we'll do we will uh, construct a concept of ensembles now what are ensembles these are mental copies of a same system under different initial condition which is uh, compatible with the constraint you put on the system. For example, if I take an isolated system, so that's the same uh, same box with n particles in it. So it has n particles, the volume is V, and I also make it an isolated system, so it cannot exchange energy with its surroundings. So if I take such a system, then according to its energy, the particles, the individual particles will only take position and velocity which, uh, which is compatible with the total energy of the system. So let's say this is the region. So every, every, every point in this region are it will correspond to a co uh, configuration of this system that will have the energy E. So this region R, every point will correspond to a configuration that will have the energy E. So as the system evolves in time, this, uh, this is like a liquid uh, which will flow as the time proceeds. So according to Hamilton's equation, each point will evolve in time and so this whole region will evolve in time and 
even if its shape is changed, so this will be the region of after set time t r prime. So this region will evolve in time, and, and there's a theorem called Liouville's theorem. And this theorem states that as this uh, ensemble, this is the ensemble, which will evolve in time, the area under this, uh, under this ensemble will not change. So if I take the area of region R, area of region R prime. So this has evolved in time. So according to this theorem, area of region R will be equals to area of region R prime. So this states that the ensemble will flow like an incompressible fluid. So it will evolve in time and the area will be preserved. So this particular ensemble in which the number of particle is constant, the volume V is constant and, and the system is isolated from the environment and so energy is constant. This ensemble is called the microcanonical ensemble. So in the next video, we will talk about the uh, other two kinds of ensembles. So that's it for today. And thank you for watching this video.